So, today, from the bastard's kitchen. From the bastard's kitchen. Um, where we all live. <laughs> where we all live together in, in bastardly ways. We're talking about how to be, or not even how to be, but what constitutes a good okay. Yeah. So, we were just briefly talking about this before we started. So, we were talking about, well, basically, in a nutshell, don't be a dick. Is, is, mm. um, that's, that seems to be a, a mantra for us, don't be a dick. <laughs> it is. Um, but yeah, there are various different ways of being a dick, aren't there? Which is, <laughs> which is where the depth of the conversation I suspect has to come from. We've written a book. <laughs> so, I mean, I think the thing is, it depends who you're looking for and what is. Looking as a constant thing in class is different to being an okay if you're okay for a, someone at a seminar as well. I mean, the don't be a dick rule applies all the time. And even worse at seminar, because if you don't know, if you pick up someone randomly from the crowd and they're going to be your okay and they're shit, they spoil it for everyone. Mm. It's not just for, mm -hmm. they don't just make you look like a cop, but because then somebody will go, well, why doesn't that work? But literally, no one can actually learn the techniques because there's no point in putting resistance in when people are first starting to learn shit. Yeah, I think levels of resistance is an important thing as well because um, if, if you're giving away a technique too easily, you know, I think people don't learn from that, but then if you're making it too difficult. So being a good at is, is a fucking difficult job, or it can be, and to be a good good at um, so you've got to get the fine, the fine line, fine balance. Well, yeah, and that, and that is about balance because there are extremes at both ends. As a rookie, you know what's coming. And no technique really works if you're prepared Absolutely. for it and yeah. set up for it. You can make anybody look bad by just saying, no, I'm not going with that. But I've also had it at the other extreme of the uh, scale there, where I have literally had a nookie fall over on the floor before <laughs> I've touched them <laughs> because they know that, well, it's their turn, when it's their turn, that's what happens. And because I haven't gone straight in, they, well, I've done my bit, I've fallen over. Yeah, what that's your cheek out of that. Well, I've seen, I've seen the photos of it. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, this was before that. I really understood the power of my entry. Yeah, yeah. But no, you're right. I, I, in fact, I had a visitor at my club the other week, mm -hmm. somebody else to train with, um, and he didn't really like being fine. Um, and like you said, he knew what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, one of my students was having trouble phoning, so I went up to demo. And it, it, it was jamming basically, so he knew, he knew the technique what I was going to do, so he knew how to sort of stop me throwing. I thought, well, I to try and explain this is a drill, we're learning, we're learning the, the skill. Mm -hmm. uh, when we put it into live practice, you know, we're a small posture, it's quite like with, with a tenny. So I strike you to small posture, and then I'll be able to take you down quite easily. But yeah, he just didn't understand, so he's been a bit of a dick, you know, so mm -hmm. it's. it's, it's um, well, I think there's, a game, there's always gameplay to be done, because otherwise you've got to punch him. Really, in the fucking face, and yeah. then do the technique, yeah. and then you can't. But there is again, it's a real skill with the play acting bit as mm. well. Is that you have to understand what the physical effects of, of that attorney would be and yeah. respond accordingly. Yeah. And you have to do the real make believe thing there. When you're learning to be a nookie, you have to learn how to respond to these skills. One of the best ones we ever saw was Paul Herbert's nookie yeah. when he yeah. used to come down. I know it was more traditional. But he really, I mean, I think assuming Paul wasn't giving him a pasting of his life. <laughs> it looked like it. It, it was like good, though. But he was like a it. really good looking as yeah. far as that's concerned. Yeah. But that is a learned skill. Yeah. And it, if you're going to learn these drills, and I have to be careful when I say this, because I had a go a while ago about just getting good at drills and making it look really effective. But when you're learning skills, the yuki has to play their part. It's no use just standing there. Yeah. Like, so, so that's a good example of Paul Herbert's okay, because I think Paul liked to <laughs> smash other guys' testicles, didn't he, with, yeah. with his kiagi. But what, what Paul Zuki would do, he would give the body response. Yeah. So he wouldn't just stand there the whole time, balls begin to fucking hands on hips. He would, he would double over as if he'd been mm -hmm. struck, and then that would set up the next And that's the point, is that it yeah. sets up what comes afterwards, and an awful lot of what you see from practical application or karate sparring or whatever you're doing is that it all comes from an unrealistic position because one thing leads to another thing leads yeah. to another thing mm. and it's again with the multiple hit thing 
Now, if the rookie is there and you hit them once, or sometimes you might hit them once and nothing will happen. But if you go with multiple hits, then they can progressively yes, sag. Uh, and they've got to realise. Uh, and again, you start... And vary. Yeah, but you, yeah, varying is the point because you start yeah. to then learn the triggers and learn the feel. Okay, this person is now ready for going on to the next stage because they're exactly. setting them up. We've talked about that before, haven't we? If you always look at the first technique that's going to fail, mm -hmm. then you're setting yourself up to believe it will always fail. Yeah. So sometimes if we're doing a progression like we were just talking about, the first game can be like, bam, they're down. Mm -hmm. And they're just right. And you've got, and that's where you start, as you said, reading it. And and you've got to judge this as well with who you're doing it with. So your students will be at different levels. So if you're not a beginner, you make it very simple. And you show them the things a lot easier. But if it's the advanced thing, you make you don't try and catch them out, you don't be a dick, but you make it mm. so they've got to react in a better way. And I think that's one of the things people <coughs> misunderstand about non-compliance. Definitely. They assume non-compliance means maximum resistance. And that's total and that is just wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You see it on the floor, we were talking about it before, but a lot. Because people will just, oh no, I'm going to resist. Or I'm going to resist you putting that arm bar on because I know you're putting an arm bar on. Well, I'm not going to put it on there, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to punch you in the fucking face or. Yeah. 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 So, so I think, yeah, being a good rookie is giving the like, right level of resistance for the drills that you're doing. Right? Yeah. Okay, so a, a question then to the team, to the panel, given that I don't teach at the moment and haven't done for a while. Do you keep in the bastard kitchen all the time? Somebody sits. <laughs> <says, laughs> somebody has to be in the kitchen, and that's my job. Do you actively teach bookying skills in your class? You know, I mean, mm. It's all we're all telling people, yeah, yeah, yeah. they need to be a good looking man. But do you learn and practice those skills, the skills of how to be an bookie? much the same as the skills of being a good pad holder. I always talk yeah. about it. It's, it's something yeah. to talk about a lot. Same as being a good pad holder, and people are just still very bad at that a lot of the time. But you talk about it, and you're like, oh, this is what you should be doing, and this is how you do it. I can so, understand yeah. it being yeah. unpopular in martial <laughs> arts class, because people will really get the feeling that martial arts is all about play acting, and you're doing the movie stuff. Yeah. But I just feel that if you're going to try and have good rookies for these things, particularly if you're doing scenario-based training. I think that's the, the key. Without them learning those skills and having been coached in those skills, it really takes away from the effectiveness yep. of what you get out of those sessions. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a thought, is to be thinking about how you actively coach being a good rookie. And one of those other things is about being a good rookie, if you, again, go from, I don't know, um, you go, oh, maximum resistance, then, straight away people don't learn things and they need to learn at that progressive pace okay so there's a little bit there's, there's this there's that i sort of yeah. lost the track of where the fuck i was going with that to be fair but i mean if you haven't got a good okay then you'll go to your strength so it's, what is my best thing oh, i'll just do that then. because you never get to develop any other skills so i'll just do this one thing so because works. it's the only thing that works reliably for me. yeah and so you don't do it and you need to be able to build people up slowly. Well, again, a large part of the technique is learning to read triggers and your partner's responses. Yeah. So it's not your body mechanics, it's your body mechanics in combination with your opponent's body mechanics. Which needs to be realistic. Yes. We can probably do a talk about skills for learning. Okay, yeah, you know I, mean? well, I think when you talked about, um, you discuss it, and I think you've got the demo as well, so when you're giving the demo, you, not just watching um, the instructor do his thing, you're probably watching what the empties, how the empties response is. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you've got, I suppose you've got a visual and what you say, but yeah, I wouldn't teach it, look you as a skill. So what I do a lot of the time though, if I'm doing it, I like the drill done on me, I'll get one of the black belts to do the drill and I'll be the okay and I say, well, and at this point, this is what I'm looking at to do this, this and this. And that's what you really need to do to make the drill work. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not teaching them as a skill, we're literally going through the drills yeah. and showing them how to do it. So you might, again, the different times, back, back in the 80s when I was doing the Japanese Jiu Jitsu, the instructor's attitude there was, okay, well, we tend to use a 10 years of distraction because that's not their main thing. They strike to give you an entry into something else. You say, okay, well, it's not really working for me. Well, okay, well, if your partner isn't reacting properly, 
give them a bit of a dig. So, so yeah, his response probably. to making somebody react in a realistic way was, <laughs> yeah. if they're not playing the game, give them something to react to. I did actually say that yesterday a little bit. Uh -huh. I said, you know, if you're working, someone grabs your bollocks, mm -hmm. you grab them lightly, but if they don't actually try to stop you, just grab them a bit hard. Because mm -hmm. then they will. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I think we just said there, who knows what you're actually saying about um, you were looking for the black belts. Uh, the, the, the IG club that I train, Dim does that a lot. So mm -hmm. they, they call up students to demonstrate techniques or what's to teach the next technique. Um, but he'll often book you for them so he can feel if they're doing it right or not. Mm -hmm. um, but he's giving them good feedback as a looky. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's yeah. telling them why the technique isn't, isn't working. Um, and I think that skill comes from an instructor though, as, as, as well. So he's been lucky enough mm -hmm. um, to be able to tell them why their technique isn't working. So that bit is a very good at in that respect. Yeah. He's also a very good instructor. Mm -hmm. um, so he's doing it from both sides. So I wonder. I think you sort of need to need to be the okay sometimes to see if people are doing stuff properly. And you always, but then you always get the other people don't you, who will always try maximum resistance to whatever you do, and nothing will ever work. Then mm -hmm. you literally can't use them as okay's. They're good for some things, and they can look okay in certain ways when you're in the of transitions. Maybe yeah. you go do one thing, and you just do something else, and they're not expecting it, and it works. I was just thinking of Pete. Remember you said Pete? He was yeah. I mean, it was great for certain things, <laughs> but if you was doing a demo, it was fucking awful. Yeah, because just yeah, try it on stuff. Yeah, which but yeah. this is it's great if you're in training <laughs> and, yeah, and you system. want that resistance. Yeah. Well, okay, that's another point though in being a good lucky, isn't it? It's also, it comes down to context. In what context are you being lucky? If yeah, somebody's exactly. explaining the class and doing a demonstration, then it's all about going with the flow and clarifying what happens in certain circumstances. If you're giving somebody as a training partner increasing resistance until things fail and then find out why they fail, that's a different skill yeah, again. Yeah. And so you have to be aware of that as a lucky <coughs> as to what is the context that you're being lucky in. Yeah. Because sometimes when things fail, people go, why is it fair? It's got to work. It hasn't. You should do something else. And then you can look at the transitions that the students are doing. Mm -hmm. So I can't do this because he's grabbed too hard yeah. too, or whatever, so I'll do this instead. Because mm -hmm. anything where he jams one thing will open up a door for something else. Yeah. I think that's, we're going to go into different territory there now, but it's where we did um, part of it where you have a third person spotting. So they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll spot the opportunity, okay, that's not working for you, but you've got this other technique here. Yeah. Mm. So that's almost like having two of these. Is it? it is, yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. But, but it's a very valuable thing when people are just coming up as a beginner because you're struggling enough to learn what you've got without thinking of what the possibilities are if this isn't working for you because you have nothing else to fall back on. Mm. Um, but it's one of the things I always used to do with my guys. It's okay, we're doing a drill, we're doing this. But if something's not working for you, do something. I don't care what you yeah, do, because exactly. we will then come back to the drill and revisit why it didn't work. But get into the habit of finding something. Just do something else, always, anything yeah. else. Don't stop on failure. Always move on to the next step. Yeah. And then we'll work with your partner and figure out what the issue was. Yeah, I think that's a real key one, just for student mentality. Mm -hmm. Just do something. Yeah. So that, that, that was about actually physical the physical side of looking, but then uh, you know, we, we mentioned hygiene before, haven't we? So nobody wants to work with a smelly bastard. Well, we used to have someone in Ando who was nicknamed B.O. Man. <laughs> and I think it's just he didn't wash his gear enough. I don't want to be that man, do you really? You don't want to be that man. Not if you're working with other people. Just, yeah. We've, I, I, I think possibly we've all trained with B.O. Man. We <laughs> have trained. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, probably even been here on occasion. Yeah. yeah you're BS man, I think, you're thinking of. Oh, <laughs> no. Could be, yeah. <laughs> I think you'll find that everything I think can say is soundly. <laughs> but yeah. Or made up on the spot. Oh, I'm <laughs> wrong with that. Yeah, okay. definitely a, a bit of personal hygiene. If you're getting up close and dirty, you know, you don't want to be dirty. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's true, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, see, I won't go to extremes doing things like I'm in my fucking gear. I'm just like, no. That's not for me. I don't like my it's just for yeah, If it's clean, clean that's that's presentation. Right. Exactly. Than Cleanliness than is fine. Don't need a fucking iron gear. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. You don't iron your belt. Obviously, <laughs> I don't wash my belt. I don't wash your belt. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, 
No, so, uh, so yeah, def- definitely um, personal hygiene and a bit of yeah. I think actually, the thing about it as well is it's not straying from the program as well. So I've had that and we've, mm. we know, so we, we can yeah, know so right. We know various yeah. people. Yeah. So like. if your instructor's, <laughs> yeah, if your instructor's teaching something, or even if you're at a seminar, because we've, we've been there as well, you know, been to a seminar where this is the drill that you're doing, uh, and then the person you're partnered with does something completely fucking different because... Yeah. Oh, well, I wouldn't, I, yeah. I know somebody else is one of your favourite people is, oh yeah, but I wouldn't do that, I'd be doing <laughs> this. But that's not worth fucking training. We, this is what the drill is. Yeah. But, I mean, but once you've got it, it's okay to put a bit of your own flavour yeah. in it, maybe. But, it's, but, but when you're getting taught something, that's what you're fucking learning. You're at a seminar. But it's dangerous as well. It is. So if somebody's yeah. doing something completely different, you know, as somebody's receiving that technique, mm. you know, you don't know what the fuck's going on. And, yeah. Well, yeah. that's part of being a dick, but yeah, I've seen people when I used to run my camp, like mainly quite cross at the time, I've seen people hurt because yeah. other people have just thrown something in that, that was their own idea that was totally unexpected and totally unprepared for. Yeah. And that is not drilling or training or being resistant. That is just being a fucking dick yeah. and hurting somebody to make yourself look good. Yeah. And that's totally unacceptable in my yeah. in my yeah. Yeah, so I was trying to think who was telling me the story of that. I think they had bad knees anyway, and they went to a seminar, mm-hmm. and somebody just fucking did a, 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 a low kick or, or tried to take them down badly with their, with their, with their knees and fucked them up for the rest of the seminar. You know, it's quite early on in the seminar, so mm-hmm. they ruined it for, yeah, it's just for, for the person attending. Plus, it's not just ruined the day, it's, it's ruined training for six to eight weeks. You know, yeah. Or well, they're recovering from that injury. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the only sense. Not being a dick, that's still coming it up. Is, that's I, 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 I well, that's, that's why it is so fundamental. You can never say don't be a dick enough <laughs> because there's so much dickery involved in martial arts <laughs> so and so many different ways of demonstrating it. <laughs> Massive, huge dickery. <laughs> <laughs>